If you guys have ever tried to learn a new Tekken character, you know it can be ridiculously overwhelming. You can just open up their move list. First of all, Tekken 8 has two tabs now. Second of all, if you just scroll down, they have so many moves. How can you tell what's a good move? How can you tell what stuff to pick? What's a punish? Where do you even begin? Well, hopefully I can put you on a learning process that'll be enjoyable and efficient. The first thing is if you're kind of a for fun player and you're just really trying to have a good time, just get in there and hit buttons. You're going to learn a lot more by fighting somebody, uh, especially if they play your character. You can see what moves they're using. Just get in there, have some fun. Now, obviously, if you're a combo enthusiast, you already know uh, how to probably get in there and you're just probably having a lot of fun exploring, uh, going on YouTube, going on Twitter. You can find your things. If you want to learn fast, these are my, this is my process. Develop a good base, learn one combo, maybe two, and then play and watch a bunch. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today with Azucena. I was going to make an anti-Azucena guide, and she had so much going on that I decided instead to just try and learn her properly. So the very first thing when I see a stance character and I'm feeling motivated to learn them is I go straight to the stances. I think it's very easy to neglect looking at stances. Throughout Tekken 7, there are characters where I just did not pay attention to their stances until way later, and I had three years of a matchup problem instead of taking the time to look at them, okay? So let's do this immediately. Let's take a look at it, and Azusena is a great example because she's known for having two big stances, back turn and libertador. I'm gonna call it liberator because my Spanish is probably awful. Let's start with back to the opponent, okay? First thing, in Tekken 8 and uh, Tekken 7, if you hit triangle, when you're in the move list, it'll pin it to the top. Then you can use select, R1 and R2 to scroll. So we're gonna do that here so we can test everything right away. Um, I already know to do back turn by doing back three plus four, but in case you don't know, that's how you do it. So we're just gonna look at all the moves. This is the process you'll use. I've already gone through and looked at everything, but what I recommend is actually going in there and writing down what each one does. So in my process, I will be doing, say, back turn stance. We're gonna look at one, two. The first thing I think to look at is how does it affect the bot if you just hit them, right? Fighting game, you gotta hit them. This is a knockdown, okay, cool. So I'm gonna put, what is it, high, high? And then it knocks down. Um, one other good thing to test is what is it like if your opponent's holding block after the first hit? Because most op opponents are gonna block once they get hit. It looks like it's still a natural combo, making sure I have counter hit off. Yep, it's good. So, natural combo, high, high. And then if you're being really, really diligent, you can check how dangerous it is if they block it, right? Like, are you at risk of dying? Minus seven, you can see at the bottom here, covered up by this group match communicating, uh, you can see that it's safe, right down here. So that's what I recommend doing. And then I would go through each move Again, it's pinned at the top here, and you can just scroll through each one and test out each one in that way. Again, it's a bit tedious, but I really recommend doing this. And the thing that will really cement it so you don't have to look over and over again is actually writing down each uh, individual component. So what I noted here, as I continued going down the list, I'm going to paste all that I have here. This is all for Azucena. You have things like one, two, back to... Uh, one, two, back, putting her in liberator stance. I said back, I meant forward. I don't know how I messed that up. One, two, forward, puts her in liberator. So we have a note of not only what the move kind of does, what we can expect from it, but how it might transition to another stance. That's really important if you're learning a stance character. And then these are a few other details. The two colon two means if you hit two while it's hitting, you press two while it's hitting, you get like an extra effect right and i say the word hatchet that's a reference to like a big power low so in this case this move okay so first thing go through if you have a stance character go through those stance moves i know it's tedious write down a few notes and then you'll remember it it'll be solid um i didn't put it here but i, I would put mid here hatchet is usually low right these are details you want to put down let's be consistent all right, and then same thing for Liberator Stance. So pin it at the top with triangle, and then you can scroll through each one and test it. 
right? Again, I have some matchup experience because I've been fighting her a bit, uh, getting in games, but I wrote down each thing. I think skipping this step makes it harder to remember these things. This, this is really important. So just a quick look. I have an inaccurate note here. See, look, this is why it's so important. I wrote NCC, which means normal, natural combo on counter hit. But it appears that even if there's no counter hit, you'll see player counter is off. When you hit, the second hit's guaranteed. And then as you'll see here, there's a cancel to go into back turn. This is important because if you mash buttons in a game, which is inevitably gonna happen, and a mistake happens or you get something you didn't expect, you can understand what it might be because you've seen it before. So if you're like panicking, you're in stance and you're holding back, oh, what did she just do there? Oh yeah, I saw that she goes into back turn. So that's the first thing. If you're playing a stance character, look at the damn stances. <laughs> Uh, this is something I've had to learn the hard way, okay? Now, for the rest of the moves, you're gonna look at them eventually, but I want to jump straight ahead to a key thing that will speed up all of your learning in any fighting game, but especially in Tekken. It's your punishes, all right? Can't really skimp on these. Uh, if you were to go through the entire move list, what you would look for are four specific punishes. You want your 10 frame punish. You want your 15 frame punish. You want your punish for blocking low. And you want your punish for launching a super slow low. These are the only four you need just to get going as quickly as possible, right? So you block a move. I can't make the bot do something to me right now. Let's say you block a move. You want to throw one, two by default. Right, you understand like, okay, if I block something, I can get my damage. The same thing for the 15 frame punish. So again, I went through the whole move list. Uh, I looked for what was 15 frames and what was a launcher. And in most Tekken cases, down forward two is gonna be your launcher, right? So if you block a move, any mid or high, it's worth just throwing out down forward two to see, hey, can I launch this? Did they do a move that is so unsafe that I get a guaranteed combo? If not, try your one, two. If those don't work, then uh, you can assume the move is probably safe and investigate further down the line. But this is how you can build experience really quickly. The other thing is the low punishes, right? So I usually, there's when you block a low, usually some combination of one, two, or uh, while standing, four is usually what's going to be your punish. In Azucena's case, she has while standing four, one. Again, just like with the last step, we're going to write down each one. Azucena has an interesting case where her standing 10 frame punish, 10 frames being the fastest, uh, fastest moves usually in the game. One, two gives you huge advantage. One, two back puts you in back turn. And 1-1 one, one forward, or sorry, just 1-1 one, one in general, puts you in liberator stance. So you have a lot of options for getting into stance from your punishment. And that's actually how she gets into these moves, into her stances and starts applying mix-ups and things like that. For her 15 frame punish, uh, there's no special stance or anything, but we're going to write down what it is here. And finally, I left off the low block punish. You'll block some lows sometimes that will look like the opponent staggers. So if Kazuya does his hell sweep, again, I can't record it, he'll do a little stagger animation. That's usually a cue to do your launching block punish from Crouch. Azucena's is while standing too. One thing I should note that my chat just reminded me is I missed uh, back turn four. I didn't put this in the list. This is a mid, safe mid, and it looks like a combo tool. I've seen it before used in combos, and it has an extension. The extension, probably not safe. Yeah, 14, minus 14. Again, it's covered up by this uh, connecting thing, but anything below minus 10, unsafe, generally don't want to spam those moves. They have their place. Don't do them all the time. Back on track, building a good base. Um, once you've nailed your punishes and you've looked at your stances, you will have seen most of the things you need to see with your character. 
Um, this next part can be either fun or boring, depends on you. Um, but you want to find like the good key moves. And I have the whole list, but I want to teach you how to look through the move list and find the moves that you kind of want to gravitate towards, right? Because there's so many, what are our criteria? How can we tell what's good? I'm going to start with the normal moves because all this heat stuff is everywhere. So the criteria for what a good move uh, would be, you want to look for high reward. You want to look for safety. Minus 10 or worse, it's unsafe. So what's a good example? Here's the one plus two. Uh, you'll notice that he's spinning. Kazuya's spinning after you hit him. So that means you have a, a huge amount of frame advantage. Uh, if you look at the little display down here, hidden behind that, plus 13. So that's a huge amount of advantage. So this move already seems pretty good. But on counter hit, it becomes a launcher. So high reward, it is a it, it, safety as in if they block it, it's minus eight. So you can't be punished. Uh, this is a good move. And this is kind of the criteria you should probably look for. Um, other criteria to look for, um, range, right? So uh, evasion, tracking, right? These are all criteria of moves to look for. Tracking you can't really test easily uh, until you have one bot fighting you, right? But in the meantime, you can test it out in combat and you can adjust your notes as you see them. One move that's a good, it, that fits a lot of these criteria is down back four. So if you try this out in the game, you'll see that she can go under jabs. The range she can hit from is like three back dashes away, two and a half. Insane amount of range. On counter hit, gives you a huge amount of advantage, good low. So th th that's a good way to kind of look for good moves. Um, the other thing is you want to avoid certain properties and moves. This is something I see a lot, especially in beginner matches. Uh, avoid uh, moves that are duckable with no mix-up. How do you test this? Put the bot to stand block and then crouch block. What that will do is the first hit they'll block and then they'll duck any second hits. A lot of these really good strings that have high reward are actually not safe because a defender can duck them. Now you might be thinking, if my opponent doesn't know how to defend, what's the point? Who cares? You will have to unlearn this and that will cost you more time, cost you more energy and be inefficient. So it's better to not do it in the first place. There are exceptions. Some of these strings have mids that you can mix them up with, but in general, leaning into this should be done uh, more rarely than moving around poking or playing another, like playing traditional offense with single hit pokes. So that's the first thing to avoid, duckable strings with no mix up. The next thing to avoid is super punishable moves. I should say spamming super punishable moves. Good example. This move seems insane, right? If you hit it, you get a full launcher, you get a big combo, lots of damage, but it's minus 21. So if they block this and they have the ability to punish you, you're dead. So if you're doing this all the time, you're going to be giving up a lot of HP just trying to hit this one move. It's not worth it. Another good example is she has this move, which is a, a bit of a tricky move because it has that extension. And if you uh, whiff the first hit on purpose, second hit launches on counter hit. So it's tempting to use a move like that. But again, if the opponent decides to just block, you're minus 14, they get free damage on you, and you haven't really gained much on how to open them up, how to like damage them. So avoid those things. With that said, I'll write down the list of good moves that I found with Azucena. There's probably more, but um, these are the moves I found. And you're gonna do the same thing you did with the stances where you take notes on each one, all right? So just a quick little overview. I'm not going to go through all of them. This is that counter hit launcher. I need to make the bot not block. This moves a counter hit launcher. This is a slow counter hit launcher. Big combo. This move is really obnoxious while running 3-2. The reason this move is so obnoxious is you can't actually duck the second hit even though it's a high. It jails. That's the terminology we use in Tekken. 
And she has a lot of these actually. Down forward one four, even though it's a mid high, can't duck the second hit. Um, back three, plus four, huge frame advantage, and it's a heat engager. Uh, back two is also pretty good. Homing high gives advantage on block and does chip damage. This does insane chip damage too without heat. Um, those are a few of her good moves. The last thing that I wanted to point out about Azusena that's pretty cool is down back four. Super long rage low, but it's 19 frames, kind of slow. It's very well complicated by... complemented. <laughs> it's very well complemented by this mid, which operates at a similar range, forward three. And on hit, you can actually confirm it into this, which gives you a mini combo. Oops. This gives a mini combo. That did... like 52 damage. Yep, so you get uh, follow-ups off that. So that's how you kind of go through good moves. And again, if you did your stance work, you can also kind of tell what a decent move is. So this move is unsafe uh, if they block it, right? But it's not in isolation, right? You're not just only showing the low. She also has the mids over and over. She has this counter hit if somebody decides to press against her. And then you have just the poking mid that does the uh, attack throw if you time it properly. So that's how you would go through the uh, and learn good moves. That should be the last tedious part. The next part is the funnest part and then you can start playing. I recommend learning one combo, maybe two. And you only need it if we look up here, only need it off of your punishes. So specifically this down forward two and this while standing two. And luckily for Azusena, it's the same thing. How do you start learning a combo? You can start to piece it together yourself or with the new combo challenges feature, <laughs> you can just go through these. So I went through all of these and I found challenge number nine. And challenge number nine gives you a nice framework for how her combos work. Just following it here, literally. Right? Uh, and we'll see that this exact combo works off down forward too. Right? Um, it works off of... I don't think it works off this, actually. Yeah. So there will be some modifications you have to make, especially on counter hit launchers. But for developing your fundamentals, your punishment, those are the key combos you need to learn. So, how do we learn this? One combo, Twitter, YouTube, experiment, or combo challenges. Uh, I caution about Twitter and YouTube, try not to learn the super optimal ones. Those can be difficult and very uh, context sensitive, right? Like very dependent on angles, characters, all that. So try and find one that'll be consistent, especially if you're off axis like this. You want something that'll still work, even if you sidestep. So there, my combo dropped. So I'll probably have to go down and find a different combo or an adjustment. Like maybe, maybe instead of doing this 4-3, which causes that to miss, maybe I just do this right away. Maybe I have to do like a little down forward one to make that work. Or in this case, that flips them over. But that's the kind of experimentation you want to do. Jeez. There we go. So if I do... Not up forward three. If I do a down forward three and a down forward one, at least to the right, I can stabilize the combo a bit. This is like small experimentation to tweak. So here, I can't do that. I might just have to do this right away. That's the kind of experimentation you want to do with one combo. But you you can already see there's so many points of variance, and this is supposed to be the easy combo, right? So find something really stable, spam that one combo, and then you can learn the other parts of the game that we're doing up here. As you get more familiar with the character and the moves and how the moves all function, and you watch more, you can start to naturally expand your combo repertoire. But it's not a top priority right away. Um... So I'll write down the easy combo in case you're learning Azucena as well. 
And then there are a couple notes you can add here. Not, there are some cases where you'll be close to the wall. So you won't want to do your traditional ender like this, which just knocks them down. You may, let me push them to the wall. You may want to do an ender where you set up a wall combo. So in this case, I was too close to the wall already, right? Can I make him run at me? And an approach, here we go. So say you land a launcher here, you can't do your full combo, right? So you want to have a way to, geez, I went way too far. <laughs> you want to have a way to adjust the combo. And that's what this ender versus wall carry note is at the bottom. Sometimes you'll do a combo like this. Say the wall is a lot closer, you'll do two, one, two. And you'll see how he flips up and flies into the air like that. That will set up a wall combo. So for the wall carry option, you'll also need a wall combo. Will depend on the character. I think some people were doing like this as their wall combo. I'll have to test that out. But that's the basic concept. Um, and then with these combo things, so I'm writing all these notes down to learn the process, right? But once I uh, note down my basic combo, I'm gonna note down some extra combo notes, like um, for example, uh, I do just a simple combo here. Liberator 412 gives this tornado state, this extended combo, right? So, I'm gonna write down that that gives me tornado. This came about during my experimentation, right? If I do 42, she slams the ground. That's probably a floor break. So, on a stage where uh, you could break the floor, important to know that that's your combo option. I had a note here. I have no idea what that is, so. <laughs> And that should set you up for most of it. There are a few extra things maybe you can explore, like she gets an enhanced stance when she's in heat. So back to forward puts her in stance. All right, you can't do this if you're not in heat. And that gives new combo options. All right? So if I try that outside of heat, nothing happens. But if I'm in heat, then I can maybe start thinking about a combo. Right? Small note to make, but not super important. That's just a little extra learning after the fact. But these things I wrote about combos, I'm gonna take them out and paste them at the very, very top of my list. And I keep this list open while I play on a second monitor. You can keep it open on your phone, all of these things. One combo, you probably don't need to write this down, right? So at the top of my list, I'm gonna put launch, the moves to do, what my ender is, and then maybe wall carry. Um, I'm gonna, this is debatable, but I would probably have it here just because I'm a bit more comfortable already with the other parts of the game. And then I wouldn't put the stances right after. That's just the order we went in. I'm going to grab my punishes. I'm going to put them right underneath the combos. All of these are very important. And then after that, uh, I'm going to grab the good moves. I think the order we did this is important because you want to take notes, be methodical, and get the information in your head, get the visuals of the animations in your eyes and your brain. And then when we're actually in game, we keep it very simple. What's my one combo? Maybe some modifiers for the combo. What's my punish? What are my low punishes? And then in case you forget, like maybe you're in the loading screen, you're like, dang, there was a good move. What was it again? You can scroll down, look at these, go back, look up when you're actually playing. This is my method for learning a new character really quickly. Again, I was going to make an anti-Azusena guide. I realized she has so much nonsense that it's going to be hard to be comprehensive. So instead, I went through the process of actually learning the character. It'll take a bit longer, again, as you scroll through the move list and find specific details. Now, it will get easier as the game starts coming out. There will be websites that compile a lot of information. One of my favorites is Jeppopotamus. Let me pull that up right here just so you can see it real quick. Jeppopotamus. What I like about Jepopotamus is they are so beyond comprehensive. So this is for Tekken 7. I don't think they have Tekken 8. Oh, no, they do have Tekken 8. So it's incomplete right now. It's not accurate uh, all the way. But if you open this alongside your um, alongside the move list, so once it's actually here, they'll have images, right? But they have the inputs and they have extra data. You'll notice that none of it is filled out. So let's go back to Tekken 7 so I can show you. Open up Master Raven. 
you know, a character that might confuse a lot of people. Look at all the details they have. They have all these frames. They have notes uh, like combo if the first hit counter hits. Uh, lots and lots of details. Some characters have images. I don't know why they don't have them here. They have old patch notes. A great website. This is jepopotamus.info. I'll put that in the text right here so you can see. Where we got? Jepopotamus.info. You don't need to learn all of this by heart. Okay, I think the methodology I gave where you can test out your punishes in combat will give you more details. And as you get more familiar with your character and other characters, you start to fill in the more nuanced details. But the very basics, punish a dude if he does something unsafe, hit the dude if he's, you know, with your good moves, land your one combo over and over, you're going to be well set up for success. That's how I learned a character in Tekken 8. I'm going to have to learn a lot of characters in Tekken 8 because so many of them are new. And my main is gone from Tekken 7. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, leave a comment if you thought I missed something. Leave a like if you thought this was useful for you. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.